Okay, so in this example, um, you sprint at 15 feet per second along a straight track for 60 seconds. Okay, so one minute. I use seconds here because our our velocity, our speed, <laughs> well, it's going to become velocity, um, is in feet per second. And so I just wanted the units to be consistent. I could have said one minute, but then you'd have to convert. It's easy to forget. So be careful about, about that. Um, but, okay, so... Okay, so you've gone, um, you've sprinted for 60 seconds at 15 feet per second. And then you stop and you turn around and you walk back toward your starting point. And um, you walk at 4 feet per second for 180 seconds, so 3 minutes. And we're asked, first of all, just to sketch a graph of this um, velocity versus time. The trouble here is that we have, um, we have direction involved, right? We've got we're first sprinting in one direction, and then we're walking back in the other direction. So what I want to do, I'm just going to draw a quick number line here. Uh, because we, when you're dealing with um, velocity, you have to establish a frame of reference, because velocity has direction. And um, so we're going to say zero is our starting point. That's wherever we started running, right? And then you, you ran along this uh, track, right? And we're going to call running, in this case, to the right, <laughs> positive. That's our positive direction. So we're increasing distance in the positive direction if um, we're running to the right. Okay. And then we're going to call the opposite direction negative. Okay. So if you're going back to where you started, you know, your, your distance from your starting point is decreasing. And so we're going to call it, uh, that's our negative direction. So, so remember, velocity has direction. Vela, vel, <laughs> velocity has direction. And um, speed does not. Okay, so there's a big difference when you're in, in physics when you're um, dealing with velocity. Oops, velocity and speed does not. Um, Okay, so velocity has direction, and when we're dealing with linear motion, we're going to use positive and negative to indicate direction. So positive velocity would be to the right, negative velocity would be to the left. Okay, so if we graph this, um, let's just draw some axes here. We're going to graph the velocity versus time. Okay, so there's my t-axis, and this will be the velocity, v of t. So we're at 15 feet per second, and um, we go um, for one minute. Okay, so I'm just going to say, okay, one minute's about there. 60 seconds. So that's 60. And then, and, and we're going away from our starting point. We're going to the right of our starting point. We're going to assume that, that um, we're traveling initially in, in the positive direction. And it all comes down to how you define your frame of reference. All right, so uh, to define the frame of reference, we have to have a starting point, and then we have to have a uh, um, direction. Okay, and then, um, then we turn around and we're walking in the opposite direction. All right, so now uh, we're traveling where our, our, our direction is negative. So we're going to have a negative velocity. So, and we do that for um, three minutes, right? So I'm going to kind of stake out three minutes here. So here's 120, here's 180, and here's 240, okay? So for 180 seconds, let's see, this was 15, but on the way back, we're going a lot slower. So let me try to draw this. So it's just a, you know, it's a long road, low rectangle, and we'll say this is uh, minus four, okay? Because, and it's minus because we're traveling in the negative direction, okay? So, um, but, now, we, the next thing we're asked to do is find how far away from the starting point you end up, right? So, all right, we can look at the, the um, graph of the velocity versus time and find the area, right? So, this area for the first 60 seconds, the area is equal to uh, 15 times 60 seconds. So, 15 feet per second times 60 seconds um, gives us... 900 feet. Okay, so we ran 900 feet initially. So, and then on when we turn around and walk back toward our um, starting point, we're going in the opposite direction, right? So we're getting closer. 
So, but we can take a look at this area. It's basically um, four feet per second times um, times 180 seconds, right? So our area is equal to four times 180, uh, which is 720. But in order to figure out where we uh, uh, where we end up, you know, after we run and then walk back, how far away we are from the starting position. We need to subtract those two, right? Because um, we, we, we ran for 900 feet and then we walked back for 720 feet, right? So we reduced our distance from uh, the starting point. So the position we end up at uh, after uh, the full 240 seconds, so four minutes, <laughs> is 180 feet, right? So we end up 180 feet from our starting point. And sometimes that's what we want. We want to know where did we end up? Where's, what's our current position? Um, but another question we could ask is just how far you traveled, right? What's the total distance that you traveled? And in that case, you know, we, have, we went 900 feet, and then we also went another 720 feet, right? So that gives us a total distance that we traveled of 1,620 feet, okay? So this problem is illustrating the difference between um, position or displacement is oftentimes what it's called um, versus the total distance and um, so you have to be careful about what you're, the problem you're dealing with as asking for so the point is that we can use the positive and negative velocity to indicate the direction of linear motion and the change in displacement or the change in position from a reference point, <coughs> excuse me, from a reference point is um, given by the area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis. So essentially what we're doing is treating this area below the x-axis as negative area. So we could just treat this as negative, you know, negative 720. And the distance traveled then is given by the area above the x-axis plus the area below the x-axis. So in that case, it's almost like we're taking the absolute value of the of the area and areas and adding them. Okay. So, and as I said before, all of this stuff with the Riemann sums is the um, it's the basis of the definite integral. So it's, so this just basically gives a definition of the definite integral in terms of Riemann sums. So basically, if we if we break our um, time interval into finer and finer subintervals, right? So we go from n equals 2 to or n equals 3, 4, 5, all the way to infinity. Um, the integral is the area under the curve. It's the limit uh, as n goes to infinity of all those little slices that we're adding up, either for the left hand or the right hand sum, and they should end up being the same thing um, as n goes to infinity. And these sums are called Riemann sums. Um, the thing that we're integral, and we're, the, thing, the thing that we're integrating is called the integrand. So this is just some vocabulary. We have the integrand. And a and b, which is the uh, upper and lower limits on the interval that we're integrating over, those are called the limits of integration. All right, so that is pretty much it. The next thing is just the discussion questions. So I will let you try your hand at those. And we'll see you in class.